Hey, Vlad. You go by Vlad hey. or Vladimir? My apologies. Vlad, most of the time, easier for people. Hey, Brent. Hey. New view, Mick. Probably it's new to me. <laughs> This is when I didn't prep in time, so I need to work from work near my bed. <laughs> then they go yeah. in the office later. All right, it's 5.30, let's get started. Uh, Jason, you're up. Here's the button. This will let everybody know that distribution has completed the implementation of the Helm generator for all the objects that OpenShift will consume. Um, we're in the process of replacing all the existing functionalities, including testing, and this will happen largely in parallel. Uh, Camille, Vladimir. Okay, I guess it can work. Thanks, Camille, for writing this. Uh, so we think today uh, and uh, discuss our next plan. Uh, currently, we have a uh, break task which should be run in second stage in production. Uh, and then we plan to. Uh, Basically, yeah, uh, move every install, including self-hosted, to the new architecture by coaching the top. Uh, and yeah, that sounds doable. Uh, yeah, also, I you know, mentioned that uh, we choose Drake Task to uh, uh, run this in a controllable way on .com, uh, be able to retry and see how everything goes. Uh, yeah, but we will convert it to the background migration for the self-managed uh, in order to make it what, more seamless for them. Let's see what this. So, uh, like, we have, like, the right task prepared. Uh, there is, like, a future and that's running background migration, and, like, we don't really know what to anticipate in terms of the data consistency, so hopefully this will allow us to... Um, iterate faster and like in more controlled way. Uh, but like basically the same code will then land on the, in the background migration for the on-prem installation and as a final sync. Um, Semi-manual process, but we have that pretty well documented. So um, let's see how it goes. Like we need Gary help on like uh, figuring out the person yeah, that could- uh, I'll, like, I'll follow up with, with friends. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get to the answers you need. Um, I, I have the question, do you, do anyone have like any concerns about this approach of like uh, starting this data migration? We're actually looking at the migrating about five terabytes of the data uh, that way. Uh, this is why this like the background migration and the way how um, it is done, uh, like not really controllable, not really easily retrievable, like we assume that this is basically too risky because it could potentially degradate the performance and like be very hard way to interrupt the process uh, when we see something misbehaving. So I haven't read this in detail, but um, I assume that for a while, whenever you know you migrate a uh, some pages, then we start using the new the zip one and then the database ostensibly knows this. Like something somewhere knows, I'm either gonna get this from SIP or I'm gonna get it from NFS. Yes, like uh, basically what happens, every new deploy uses zip basically. Right. What this migration does, it creates an archive 
and store this as a zip. So basically it like replicates the current, the current deploy mechanism. So basically it changes this entry in the database to indicate, hey, this is like your archive that you should be using right now. This is exactly what it does. Like this migration, what actually performs it like get, goes to NFS pool. So the files put them in the archive, uploads to object storage, links them to the project to be used. And basically on the next uh, pages refresh of the API, it would start using the new archive. Um, if like if anything goes wrong, there is like the feature flag that can basically kill the whole mechanism and like fall back to the old way of serving data. So um, we can like roll back at any point uh, if anything goes wrong. Like we are not removing any data; we are only adding new data uh, with that change. Okay. Uh, all right. Hey, Brad, I'll review that with you so we can cover the different cases. But it, it does sound like we can probably do some queries uh, before we start the migration to have an idea of how far along this is, what progress is it making, and all that. Uh, and I can ask Facet to help us with that as well. So, if I recall so. correctly, Vlad make like very extensive. Uh, the bugging information of the migration process while it's being executed. Okay. So it okay. kind of spells out like all potential uh, errors in the data migration and like, and like the progress in the migration. So it's right. actually like yeah. very uh, uh, like ex exhaustive in amount of the information that it produces about the process. All right. I know SRE is very constrained at the moment, so I may just volunteer to run this myself and just spend time between meetings doing this. So uh, I'll take a look at it tomorrow and then I'll circle back with Brent and then we'll figure out who does it. But if, if, if the SREs can't, then I know they're super busy, then I'll just take it on. Uh, Hey, Camille, just so I have a flavor for what's what's the timeline? It was, uh, I tried to look at the issue and see if there was a timeline on the issue. I didn't, it didn't jump out at me. So if it is in there, I apologize for missing it. Um, I, I mean, like we have individual issues like assigned to the milestones, but if you talk about this running of the particular, particular migration, it really depends on the SRE being available with that. So as soon as we have the person on the infrastructure side, to go with that, uh, with us, we we have the accurate timeline and expected finish date. Um, like we, we we have the tools in the place. We we basically need to uh, iterate on running them. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Also, the expectation is that this is going to take days, right? So um, I I would expect that if everything goes super smooth, like by the end of this month we will basically be done with the migration if everything goes super smooth. Okay. Uh, but it's it's like uh, right now. I know, I get it. This, I, this I is really hard to predict. Smooth. Especially with the, the my follow-up question, which is going to be, um, and again, I haven't read the, the issue, is there a way to throttle this? So for instance, you know, let's say the platform starts, it's under heavy stress. Can I ask it to not go as fast? Or is this, this on is, or off? This is why we decided with the rake task, because like it's right now sequential and you can interrupt that in anything. Okay. It's like if, if platform is misbehaving. And like we wanted to actually run that to understand the rate of the migration to optimize that if it needs to be faster than that. So uh, it's designed to be initially slow because we don't know really uh, what to anticipate when we're gonna be pulling, zipping, uploading data. Uh, right. But also we don't know how much stress it's gonna to produce. And like to answer your question, like if, uh, if platform is like misbehaving, you can just interrupt and it's gonna basically start from the moment uh, that you interrupted. Okay. All right, that's, I'll that's... circle back, sorry. Oh, I was going to say that's good to hear because I literally just asked that on the uh, on the change management issue as well. But thank you for putting one of those together. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that we had an and on cord to pull while we were doing this as well. But yeah, I, Jerry, I'll, I'll add it to our one on one to to just yep. review together.
Mary, you can go ahead and vocalize your. Yeah, comments. thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask if we are running this as a rate task, that's fine, great. Um, do we expect once we enable the background migration, do we want to be able to test this on staging slash production as well, just to co cover that use case? So I don't know whether we want to have 1% of the data behind just to cover it with the background migration, just to see what's happening, or um, did we even think about that? Uh, we did We did not yet get like running that as a, a background migration, but I think your suggestion is very good and we should definitely like think about running that on the staging. Uh, I would be um, not very into running that on the production once we migrate, but we can definitely run that and simulate that on staging. Fairly easy that it did run properly. Cool. Um, and then uh, the next question, like will you and Vlad work on this? Um, just asking because of the time zones. If you, if you find an SRE who is in a similar time zone, it can significantly speed up the cycle. I think it would greatly help if we would basically uh, initially babysit that with the SRE during our working hours and not make it initially run outside of our working hours to reduce the potential stress of everyone else. Great. Yeah, Brent and I will cover all that when we when we talk about this and figure out schedules. And uh, at some point, this thing will get enough progress and we'll get enough confidence with the migration that then we can contemplate just letting it run or whatever. Um, so cool. Thank you so much for all the work on this. Um, all right, Jason. Just wanted to touch base that there is further work to be done for complete supportive pages as a part of the deployments within CNG, specifically regarding access control, OAuth enrollment, and uh, custom domains. Um, of the two here, when it comes to access control and custom domains, which one does this group happen to think is a higher priority so that we can make sure that gets scheduled first? Uh, and two, I just wanted to call out there's a quick search there for all the labels related to the pages items as a part of the CNG and Helm charts. I would say that from the info site, we're more interested in custom domains than OAuth, but that's that's a very infracentric view of the world. Right, and in this particular case, it's not that you can't use OAuth, it's that the automation of setting it up fresh uh, is going to be a little complicated. So if you have pre-existing on, because you've configured this prior on an omnibus, you can manage to get it to work without too much of an issue. Um, but we need to, for example, document that, expose the appropriate settings and Kubernetes secrets patterns, things like this. When it comes to custom domains, there are some concerns to look at and how this functions. Uh, the first one really being that you need to expose a service directly to the internet over a load balancer and making sure that uh, the service that is exposed in that fashion isn't providing ports that it shouldn't be, such as metrics. Right. I think Brent has, should we, who in, in Infra should we talk about this, Brent? Because maybe uh, one of the uh, SREs should be closely associated with this. Yeah, I was gonna uh, just making a side note to myself to to chat with Dave um, about getting somebody from his team to to assist here. All right, so I'll add as a follow up uh, to get to get to an answer, Jason. All right, that is it for today. Does anybody? Have anything else? All right. Thank you so much. Have a good, have a great week.